What up, what up? Wimbush here, and today I'm excited to show you guys how to make this. Now, big shout out to B-Motion for letting me use the audio track, but without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so I have Cinema 40 open. I'm still in version R21. What I'm gonna first start off by doing is, let's create our tube. So I'm gonna have a cube here, or I mean, I have a tube here. And for my orientation, I wanna come down to plus Z. Okay, and so for my inner radius, I'm gonna make this about, actually, I have to start on my outer radius. So I'm gonna make this 300. And then on my inner radius, I can make this 250. So we have something like that, but it doesn't exactly look circular. And so for my rotation segments, I'm gonna switch that up to around 60. That gives us something nice there. And then for my height, let's bring this up to like 300. Okay, and then for my height segments, let's see. We're gonna keep it, I think I'm gonna keep everything else as is. And so my next step from here is, I'm gonna add the topographer from Pixel Labs and from Merkle. So once you have that downloaded, you come up to your extensions, come down to, where is it at? Topology Deformer. And it's called Topoformer, my fault. So we get a Topoformer. And for some reason on version R21, it takes a second for it to kick in. Okay, once we have the Topoformer here, I'm gonna start by, let's drag this underneath our tube. And then for my plane right here, let me drag this over a little bit. So for my plane right here, I'm gonna actually make this plane 16 by 16. And then for the topology type, I think I'm gonna go with Beeple here. And I'm gonna just leave everything at the default. So for the Delta, the Epsilon, the Erations, I'm gonna just leave that all default there. And then before I do anything else, I wanna make this around 60 frames per second. So I'm gonna come over to edit up in my top left-hand corner, come down to project settings. Then for my FPS, I'm gonna just change this to 60. And then I'm gonna come over here to my edit render settings and I'm gonna change this one to 60 as well. And then let's just make this 1920 by 1080. You can always change the resolution once we get into Unreal Engine, but for now I'm just gonna keep it at 1920. I usually do that. And then once I render out of Unreal, I actually render out at 4K. But for here, let's um, let's click back on Topoformer. And then here where it says Mo Extrude Rig, you wanna click on Create. And this is gonna create some, some random effectors and it's gonna create a Mo Extrude. We don't wanna mess with these at all. We wanna, we wanna um, use everything on top of Former to control our extrude, our scale, and our rotation. So if you see under here where it says Position, Scale, and Rotation, that's controlling these random effectors right here. So we don't wanna to touch these at all. We want to control everything here. And so for my scale, I'm bringing this down to like 5%. Let's see what happens if I move up my position a little bit. So somewhere around there could look pretty cool, around 22. We don't want to go too crazy with it. We just want to add some detail to our tube here. And then I think that's it for this part here. And so this part is really important here. What I'm going to do from here is I'm going to hold down control and then left click and drag. Then I'm gonna turn this off because I made a copy of this because I'm actually gonna break this down into an editable poly. What I found is I'm gonna be bringing this into the cloner. And when I brought it into the cloner with the topo former, it made everything really slow and sluggish and it was really hard to work with. And so my workaround for that is I come and I select everything here and then I come over to object and right here where it says connect objects plus delete, I click on that. And now I have an edible tube that I can throw inside my cloner with no problem. All right, so now my next step is I'm gonna put this inside of a cloner. MoGraph, come down to cloner. Let's drop this into our cloner here. Like so. And then for our mode, I'm gonna actually click on object and what the object I'm going to be using is actually going to be a circular spline. That way we could get a perfect loop having our camera go in a perfect circle and everything should align up. So right here where you see the pencil, I'm going to click on that, click on circle. 
and then I click back on my cloner here and I'm gonna drag the circle spline into the object and you can see it looks like some crazy transformer planet we're going to fix that now so I'm gonna click on a circle and for my plane I'm actually going to do which one was it XZ I think yeah there we go like that and then let's bring this up to maybe 3000 from my radius there we go and you can see my tube is already starting to go into a circular motion here so what I want to do now is for my distribution under cloner let's go to let's click on even then let's jack our count up to like 80. so now we have a nice little tube here going and I think I might have to make my circle a little bit larger so I'm gonna click back on circle come to my radius click 5000 there we go something like that so we want to leave some gaps in between here so we can have our ring lights in there as well so i'm gonna go back to cloner and then under smooth rotation i want to make sure this is clicked on like so so if you click it you can see it kind of smooths it out so it's going in a perfect circle here and then for our instance mode we want to make sure it stays on instance like we said before when we if you watched any of my tutorials in the past you know that Unreal Engine doesn't recognize render instance or multi instance. So we always have to have it on instance mode here. And another caveat, if we come over to file and then actually no, we want to come over to edit and we go under preferences, there's a couple of things that we want to make sure are check mark here to make it importable for Unreal. I just found this out recently, but if you click on file here, right here where it says save polygons for Cineware and save animation for Cineware, you want to make sure that you have both of these clicked if you don't have these clicked if you watched any of my tutorials in the past again you know once we bring a MoGraph cloner into Unreal it's going to bring in each of these objects as its own separate object but if you click it like this it will give you one instance of the geometry that will control all of them if that makes sense so one of these tubes right here instead of having 80 of them in there it's going to give us one so if we add a material to that one it will add the material to all of them and i can show you more about that once we get into unreal but just make sure you have those two options clicked on there so again i went to edit came down to preferences and then it's under file here all right cool so the next step i want to do is like i said before i want to add some ring lights in between our tubes here so i'm gonna come up here and just add a torus then i'm going to make this around 250 and then for my segments here instead of 32 i'm gonna go to 60 and for my pipe radius let's bring this down to like 10. Let's zoom in here a little bit and then i think i'm good on my pipe segments for my orientation i'm gonna do plus z there we go and so to make sure that we have it evenly distributed throughout this ring i can actually take my clone here I'm going to just rename this one clone. Um, let's name this one clone tunnel. And then I'm going to hold down control, click and drag to make a copy of it. Then I'm going to name this one cloner light. And then I'm going to take this tube in here, delete that, and then bring my torus underneath here and drop that in. And as you can see, we don't really see it in here. So what I'm going to do is then I'm going to come down to offset. Let's do about 2% there. Okay, somewhere around 2 is fine. So it's not completely between the gaps. We want some gaps in there just so we can have some fog and light come in our tunnel as well. So you can play with this till you find something that you're pretty happy with. Somewhere around there maybe. So we have some gaps in there. We're going to have our our Taurus here be our light and then the next step is let's bring in our camera so I'm gonna make a default camera here just a regular cinema 4d camera click that and then under coordinates I'm gonna just zero everything out like so and then I'm actually going to take this ring here and I'm gonna bring our camera and connect it to the ring and so that we can have it go fully around the loop there so in order to do that let me click on my camera so i want to click on tags come down to align the spline there we go and then my circle here i'm gonna click this into the spline path 
And now you can see that my camera jumped over to the beginning of our circle here. Let me bring this down so we can see it. There we go. Now we can see our camera here. Hopefully you can see it. You can see we have our circle here. And actually, let me no, the number eight should be fine here. So, okay. So in order to make this move, let me click on here. And now we're looking through the view of our camera. And so if you see this position here on our tag, if we start moving this, it will start moving the camera. And that's how we get a perfect loop. But as you can see, it's not looking forward the whole time. So I believe we have to click tangible. There we go. So once you have tangible check mark, now it's always going to be going along the spline. So let me come down here to my timeline. I'm actually make this 750 frames. Remember we're at 60 FPS here and I'm going to start keyframing. So I'm going to start at zero. Click keyframe there and then come all the way up to 750 and drag this all the way up to 100. Make a keyframe there. Now, if I go back to the beginning of my timeline, now you can see we have a perfect loop going on. And I don't know if you noticed at the beginning when I click play, it started to ramp up here and we don't want to do that for a loop because once it goes to the end more towards 750, it's actually going to start slowing down as you can see here. So that's not really going to make for a great loop. You don't want to have it slow down, stop and start. And so that in order to get around that, I'm going to come up here to my upper left hand corner where it says layout. I'm going to click on animate. Then come down here where it says align the spline. Just click on this to make sure both keyframes are selected. Then I'm going to come and select linear. And now if I click play, you can see it just started right off the bat. We don't have any ramp up and we're not going to have any ramp down once it gets to the end of our timeline here. Boom. All right, cool. So now we have our perfect loop all set up. So the next step now is we want to add some randomness within our tunnel here. And so as you can see, each one of these geometry is perfectly aligned. So I'm just going to come and add a random effector to my Klerner tunnel. So I'm going to click that, come up to MoGraph, come down to effector and just click on random. And you can see it started to make it a little bit wobbly there. That's because if we come over to parameter, it's changing our position. I mean, you could do that if you want, but all I did was change my rotation. So I believe it changed this one here. So if I click on rotation and come down to B and just start spinning this around, you can see that it's offsetting it and they're all moving at different speeds. So it's going to give us some nice variety in there. So everything doesn't look linear, like we have a pattern going on in there. And we're going to be moving at a decent speed, so you're not really going to recognize it anyway. But this is just those nice little details that help you out there in the end. And so we have that all set up. And now the next step is let's add some materials to this. So down here in my lower left hand corner, I'm just going to actually double click like so. And I'm just going to make a generic material. I'm going to just name this one tunnel because if you have your Unreal account there, you actually get the mega scans library free. And so I'm going to show you how to actually replace this inside of Unreal. So for right now, I'm just going to use a, um, a generic material here for my tunnel. So let me click this down where I see my tube. I drag this into here. All right, like so. And then I'm going to double click again. And I'm going to name this one light. Let me double click on this. And I'm going to turn off my color, turn off my reflectance, and then just turn on my luminance. And I'm just going to leave it at default white. Once we're in Unreal, we can change it to any color that we want. So I'm going to bring that over to my torus. So now I have a material set up for my tunnel and I have a material set up for my light. And in my example, you can see that I actually had light streaks going along the bottom and the top here. So I can show you guys how to make that one as well. So what I did for that, let me click this off. Let me click H. There we go. So now I'm in exact center. So all I did was click H on my keyboard and that brought me out to the center of my scene. Because what I want to do now is I want to add a cylinder. So for my cylinder, I actually want to make this a radius of like five. 
leave my height around 200 height segment let's do like 108 let me zoom in here so we can see what's going on there we go rotation segment make this around 25 and then for my orientation again we want to do positive z and so what i'm going to do from here is i'm actually going to add a spline wrap to my cylinder here so let me click this bring this under cylinder and then for my spline i'm actually going to use the circle but i'm not going to use this circle i'm actually going to make a copy of it so that i have liberty to actually move it to where i want so i'm gonna hold down control click and drag and i'm gonna just name this one circle um let's name it circle light and bring this up here so now i'm gonna click on my spline wrap click and drag my circle light into there and you can see that it's looking kind of funky here so naturally i've made a mistake here you can see that it's kind of stretched out here so i believe if i come over to cylinder let's make this positive x there you go so if i click on my camera it should bring us into the middle of it like so so what i want to do here is actually click on my circle light come down to my y and let's drag this down to the bottom here we can just drag it to where we want so it might be cool to have it actually intersect with the tunnel there so something like that then let's bring up the segments on here just a little bit to kind of smooth it out so that could be our bottom one so number around 25 then we select these both click and drag make a copy of them and then for this spline wrap i'm gonna drag this one here and then I'm going to go in the opposite direction. So I'm actually take this negative, just delete that. And this should give us equal footing. So yeah, so 237 brings us up to the top here. And then I'm actually click and drag this light to make a copy. So again, the whole control, left click, drag over. And let's name this one, um, let's name this neon light. And I'm going to click and drag this over to these. So that when I bring it into Unreal, I have a material that would control these cylinders here. Then I have a control for these lights here. And then I can replace my tunnel with this basic generic tunnel material here. So actually, let me hit Control Shift. I mean, Control S to save. So I'm going to name this VJ Loop. So this is just my Cinema 4D file that I'm saving. And then we're going to actually save for Cineware. And we could bring that file into Unreal Engine and we'll get everything squared away from there. So I have my scene saved here. And before I save it out for Unreal first, I forgot that I have to come to my camera and I actually have to bake out these keyframes here. So if I click on Layout Animation and I click and drag my camera underneath here, you can see now we have our camera underneath our dope sheet. And so what we want to do is make sure we're on zero, come down to Function, come down to bake object and let me drag this up here so for everything here i want to make sure it's checked on so i'm gonna click on all parameters start from zero go to 70 or 750 click ok and now you can see that it made a camera copy and this one actually has all of our keyframes in here so when we bring this into unreal our camera animation should be exactly how it is here so if I didn't do that and I just came in with this tag here, Unreal Engine actually doesn't recognize this tag. And so if I brought it into Unreal Engine, it would just come in with the camera, but no animation. So make sure you bake out that animation for your camera so that when you bring it into Unreal, you're going to have all the animation keyframes that you need for your camera animation. So now let me click this original camera. We don't need it anymore. So I can actually delete that. Then let me click on this. So now we're back in this camera copy. And I can actually name this camera UE4. Or actually, let me just name it camera baked. There we go. And then this tube, I don't need this anymore. I was just keeping it as backup in case I needed it for anything. But we don't need it, so I'm going to delete that as well. I'm just kind of tidying up my scene here for bringing it into Unreal. So now, let me hit Control S again, and I'm going to save this. Okay, so I have my Cinema 4D scene saved. And now I'm going to save it out for Unreal. So come down to File. Save project for Cineware. And then over here, I actually have a folder for UE4. So I'm gonna double click on that. Then I'm gonna just name this one VJ underscore loop underscore UE4. 
Let's save this one here. So now that we have our scene all cleaned up and we have our camera animation baked out, the next step is to open up Unreal Engine and we're going to actually import that into Unreal now. So I'm going to come over to Datasmith. Let me click this. Then let me find out where I have my Cinema 4D UE4. So here we go. VJ loop underscore UE4. This is the one that I saved out for Cineware. So I'm going to just open this up then put it into my content folder click ok and then here i'm just going to click import and leave everything at default so now we have our tunnel here inside of unreal engine you can see here under a content browser in this folder here this is everything that we brought over from cinema 4d so if i double click this you can see we have our geometry like so so remember when i told you to save those files out from cinema 4d that click mark those um those two boxes that allowed me to have this here. So if I double click on this, you can see here we have a material slot. So any material that I put on this is gonna put them across all the clones that are in our scene here. And if I didn't have that box clicked inside this folder, each one of our geometry would be listed inside of here and it would have been a mess. We would have had to select each one separately and changed out the material. And so that's why we did that. And then come over to materials. You can see we have our light, our neon light, and our generic tunnel material. And then here under animation, this is where our sequencer is at. But there's actually a little bug that I found in Unreal Engine, especially when using the MoGraph cloner. Like when we have a lot of these clones in here, it makes our screen kind of glitch out whenever I'm in a sequencer and I need to add a camera cut. So I'm going to show you something that I figured out on how to get around that. So if I double click on my VJ loop here, you can see if I go to add a camera cut track like so, cause we need that to be able to see our animation in here. If I click on camera, you can see my screen is glitching out and I can't select my camera here. And so a workaround for that is if I come down to my settings and then come over to where are we at? I think it's system. And then for my, um, my sizing here, like I'm using a 4K monitor, so this might be a 4K monitor thing. But instead of 150, if I come down to 125, change my resolution here to 125. Then if I click on camera here, you can see that it's not glitched out anymore. So if you ever have a glitch in Unreal and you're using a 4K monitor, you might have to use those steps to get it fixed out. So I'm going to I'm gonna click on camera baked. And now you can see under our camera cuts, we have our sequencer here. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to change my resolution back to 150. There we go. And then I'm going to come under perspective, make sure I have my camera selected. And then if I click play, you can see that we're moving through our tunnel. There we go. So we have a cool little sequence playing there all in real time. Let me go back to zero here. You can see we're at 60 frames per second. If I click under transform, you can see that we have all of our keyframes here. But let me do something here. Like I want to maybe have it rolling while it's moving around. So I'm going to click on zero here under rotation. Let me do a pitch. No, I wanted the roll. So I'm going to be on frame zero. If I click the plus key here, make a keyframe, go all the way to the end, the 750, make this 360. Click on keyframe again. Now let's see what happens. We should see like a cool little twirl happening here in our tunnel. So I'm going to click on play. There we go. So we could have did this inside of Cinema 4D, but if you save it for Unreal, I mean, you could keyframe it out here as well, come up with some cool animations. And so that just gives a little bit of spice to our, our um, tunnel sequence here. So what I want to do now is I'm actually going to start adding some of the um, post-processing first, and then I'm going to get into the materials and lighting. So if I come under visual effects right here, where it says post-processing volume, let me just bring this into my scene. And under transformation, I'm going to just zero this out, make it direct center. And then under here, under search, I'm going to type in UNB for infinite extent unbound. You want to click on that. And that just makes sure that everything that's in this post processing is going to affect the entire scene, not just the bounding box. So let me click X here. 
And I'm just gonna come down through some of these settings. I don't need mobile, but for my bloom, I'm gonna turn on method and intensity. Maybe bring my intensity down to like 0.1. And then for my method, let's come down to convolution and click that. So now if I come over to my, my content browser here, go into materials, I can start messing around with the lights. So I'm gonna double click this first one that's called light here. And let's maybe make this emissive color blue. So I'm gonna click that. Let's drag this up to blue. Somewhere around there. Click OK. And then for my glow strength, let's just start dragging this up till we find something we're happy with. So maybe somewhere around there. Let's click on even 50. Click save. And then for my neon light, let's see. Maybe let's pick, let's see what blue looks like. Maybe a little bit purplish. Yeah, just have fun with it. Click OK. And then just bring up our glow strength. Here we go. Somewhere around there. Really kick it up. Let me, let's go synth wave. We're going to do it. Let's go full synth wave. So I'll make it like purple. Click save. Something like that. And then I'm actually going to open up Megascans Bridge to bring some of our materials in for Megascans for our tunnel here. Okay, so let me come in, just open up Megascans Bridge here. And I'm just going to pick something real simple, maybe like a shiny metal or something. I should have some actually downloaded. So let me come under my purchases. Let's go for, let's see, types. Let's do surfaces. So I believe I used something here. I think I used this painted gunmetal. So I'm going to click on this. And then for my export settings, leave it at PNG 4K. I'm gonna just click export down here. And this should send everything over to Unreal, export successful. So let me close this out. And then we can start seeing everything importing here into Unreal. All right, cool. So we have all of our materials here. So remember when I told you guys about the geometry, how we can have one piece of geometry affect everything across the spectrum. This is where that's really gonna pick up. So let me go to my content folder come here under VJ loop, come under geometry. Then I'm gonna double click my tube here. So now that I have this open, let me go back and find my mega scans material. There we go. So I'm gonna just click and drag this over here. So now it affects our entire tunnel. I click save and there we go. So it looks a little bit funky here. Let me, um, I'm actually gonna delete the floor. I'm going to delete the light source. I'm going to just pretty much keep everything that I put in here. So delete player start, delete the sky and the skylight. And let me see reflection. I could probably leave this in here. Let me make sure that it engulfs our entire scene. So I'm just going to have to raise the radius up here on our reflection. So under here, under influence radius, I'm gonna drag this out somewhere around there. And then under build, I'm actually going to build a reflection capture. And then under my, if I click this down button here under screen percentage, I'm gonna just jump this up to like 200. There we go. And I'm gonna add some lights in here too, so it's not so dark. So let me come over to my basic lights I just add a point light in here. Drag this over somewhere like that. There we go. And then I'm actually going to play through my animation and just start adding some point lights in here just to kind of lighten up our tunnel. So if I click under cinematic viewport here, then I have to click back on my camera. Now I have my play menu down here so I can actually drag through here. And then it's like, okay, maybe this is a good point to have a light. So I'm going to drag a light in here. So I'm just going to do this throughout the scene. You guys kind of get the idea of what I'm doing here. So I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to, you know, take it at your discretion on how much light you want in your tunnel. Maybe one more light. There we go, something like that. I'm gonna hit Control S to save. 
Now that we have all of our lights set up in our tunnel, the next step is to actually build our lighting for our scene. So let me come back to the beginning here. And you can see here where it says lighting needs to be rebuilt. We just come under build and then we come under lighting quality. Right now it's on medium. I'm actually gonna go at full production. So I'm gonna click on that and then click back here again and build lighting only. I'm gonna click this and this should take a few moments for this scene to build out. And then once we're done there, it's a basic setup of going into our post effects processing, turning on stuff that we want to turn on like ray tracing or, you know, motion blur, things of that nature. And then from there, we'll just render it out and we'll kick it off and we'll call it a day. Okay. So it looks like our lighting is baked now. So I'm going to come under post processing volume. I'm going to just start ticking off some of the stuff that we want in here. So we did our bloom for our exposure. I'm going to turn on my, I want to do the men EV 100 min and max there. So I'm going to turn this to zero. Maybe make this about one. So basically treating this as if it's like curves or levels. So somewhere around there might be good. And then my chromatic apparition, turn on intensity. Could turn this up just a tad bit, maybe like 0.5. Somewhere around there might be good. And then don't think I want to mess around with dirt mask. Lens flare, let me turn on intensity and bokeh size. So you can see now, let me turn up intensity a little bit. Then my bokeh, I kind of like to blur it out a little bit there. So somewhere around 20, maybe something like that. And then depth of field and motion blur, I'm actually going to leave off. So let me come down to ambient occlusion, my intensity, bring this up, maybe somewhere around there. I mean, let's do like 0.8, leave my radius at 200. Then I'm going to enable ray tracing, ambient occlusion, my samples. I guess I could turn on global illumination. And then for my ray tracing global illumination, I'm going to do final gather. Since it's a cinematic, we could do final gather. And then for motion blur, like I said, I'm not going to turn it on. I thought it looked cleaner without it. So if I click play, I mean, I think that looks pretty cool. Like how that is there without the motion blur. So I'm going to leave it like that. So let me come down to reflections type. Let me use ray tracing. Screen space, reflection, intensity, quality, bring that up to a hundred. Then I think that might be it. Cast shadows for lighting. I want to turn that on. Then I think that's good there. So my last step now is I'm actually going to add a little bit of fog to my scene here. So let me click back here and come over to visual effects. And I'm going to use this one called exponential height fog. So I'm going to click and drag this into my scene. And actually zero this out. Let me turn up my fog density. Let's see what happens. So I do point one. You can see we're starting to get a little bit of fog at the end of the tunnel there. Maybe turn on second fog. Somewhere like that. So I think just a little bit of fog here like this is pretty good. Something like that. And if you want to mess around with it more and like after effects, I mean, you can always render it out and bring it into after effects. But as far as it goes for the simple setup, I mean, that's pretty much it there. If I come down to my sequencer, come down here, I could turn on looping, make sure we have a good, perfect loop going. So I'm going to just click play. You can see that it's running real time, full speed, 60 FPS. And there we go. We have a good loop going through. So the next step from here is to actually just render it out and then do what you want with it. You could take it straight out of Unreal or you could bring it into After Effects to add some post stuff like Deep Glow or things of that nature, you know, Magic Bullet, stuff like that. So I want to come over here to my sequencer, click on this clipboard, and then we have a whole bunch of different options here. I mean, I usually do an EXR, but I mean, you could render out as a PNG, you could do an AVI, you could actually do Apple ProRes as well. So let me actually just click on Apple ProRes. Then for my resolution, 
I'm actually bring this up to 4K. So 3840 by 2160. And then I think that's it for there. And then there was one more important step here. Let me see. Maybe I could do 422 HQ. Then let me come down to this right here. Yeah, so under general, right here where it says use separate process, you want to click on this because for some reason with um, this version of Unreal, if you don't click that, I found that my renders were coming in at a really low quality and I couldn't figure out why. But I found that once I use this use separate process and click that on, it basically made everything render nice and crisp. So that's real important. If you're not getting full quality renders, make sure you click this on here. And then for my output directory, let me come over and let me make a new folder. Let's name this pre-renders. This is where I'm going to save my render at. And then I think everything else should be good to go. So I'm going to just click capture now, click save selected, and then just watch everything render out. Now that you'll see since we clicked on that post processing button there, that it's actually going to make a, a new file open up inside of Unreal. And then it's actually going to show you it rendering here in a minute. So if you look at my screen, this is actually the 4K render rendering out frame by frame. You can see that it's moving pretty quickly here. So once it's done, it's actually going to compile it into a QuickTime for us. And we can actually use it for playback. Or like I said, we can bring it into After Effects if you want to add some stuff on top of it. But this is pretty much how you make your VJ loops inside of Unreal Engine. So now that our movie's done, let me find the folder that we rendered it out to. Yeah, so VJ loop, pre-renders, then I'm double click main. And there you go. You can see we have our 4K render. And actually, let me make this full screen. So there we go. Right out of Unreal, we have a perfect loop that's playing. Let me click on, I actually have to make it, what is it, repeat? Here we go. So if I click play there, you can see that we have a 4K render. And, you know, if you want to add some cool stuff to this, if you're doing like a VJ loop, I mean, this is simple as that. So, I mean, we literally made this within minutes. And it gave us a little pause there, but I think that's because of the way this player plays. But yeah. And then if you really want to get funky with it, and you come over to my render here that I made with I put this in the After Effects. This is the one that I posted up on Instagram and click repeat. But yeah, I did some deep glow from After Effects, I added some magic bullet looks to it. Nothing too crazy, but just added a little bit there to kind of emphasize on uh, the neon lights and everything there. So hopefully this showed you guys how quick and easy you can make a quick loopable VJ loop inside of Cinema 4D and Unreal Engine using the capabilities of real-time rendering. Once again, I want to give a big shout out to B-Motion. He made the audio track that I'm using for the VJ loop here. And hopefully this helped you guys out. If it did, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing a lot more Cinema 4D to Unreal stuff in the future. And also, if you haven't checked it out yet, make sure you go to the Cinema 4D YouTube channel. For NAB Live, I actually did the C4D Live intro title using Cinema 4D in Unreal. And then I did like an hour presentation, kind of break it down the steps how I made that. So make sure you go check out Cinema 4D's YouTube page. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.